Greetings everyone, this is Mr. Mull, and uh, on this video I'm just going to help you through the first couple of problems. Um, the first thing I want to point out is that I want you to assume that for all these problems that there is a negligible friction. So these are frictionless uh, ramp and rolls. Um, the other thing I'd like you to do is, is try to d divide up your graphs so that there are uh, different sections of the graph representing the different sections of motion. For example, for question one, I notice that there's two distinct uh, regions where the motion is different. So what I would do is I would start by drawing a little dotted line and dividing up my graphs into two segments so that we can clearly see uh, when one stops and the other begins. And so for this one here, this is our classic ramp and roll example. As the um, ramp, as the ball goes down the ramp, its speed increases. It starts from a reference point. It starts from the reference point. So I have an increasing steepness. Uh, and then once it hits the bottom of the ramp, I'm just going to draw a line here, um, it continues at that constant speed that it had when it left the ramp. So I'm going to extend out that line, and that's going to be a straight line. So I have the, uh, the acceleration, accelerating part in the first, and then I have the constant velocity in, in the second part with the straight line. And so I look at my velocity. Um, the slope of my position time graph is increasing, therefore my velocity is increasing, and then it remains at some constant uh, value when it hits the bottom of the ramp and it doesn't speed up anymore. And then so I look at the slope of my velocity time graph, and it's positive and constant, so my acceleration is positive and constant, but when it hits the bottom of the ramp, it's no longer accelerating, so we would put our zero on there. And if I were to draw a motion map on here, you know, we start out, we're speeding up, and when I hit the bottom, whatever speed I have is going to be constant. We could show that using a congruency line. Make sure that you have your acceleration vector pointing in the right direction when it is actually uh, accelerating. And so there we go. Um, let's do number two. Number two, we have a ball actually sliding up a ramp now. Um, this little v sub zero means it starts with some velocity. It's moving. And so uh, I'm going to go ahead and, because it's moving and it's moving rather quickly, I'm going to start my position time graph as starting out uh, steep. And because it's moving at a constant speed, it hasn't started going up the ramp yet, I'm going to go ahead and draw a straight line for my position time graph. Now when it hits the ramp, it starts to slow down. So if, if it's slowing down, it has to get less steep. So I'm going to start, and I'm going to go ahead and draw... I should have done this first. Look at the motion. There's two different segments of the motion, the, the ground and then the ramp. And so I'm going to divide up my graph into two sections. So it was moving at a constant uh, velocity in the positive direction for a couple seconds, and then it slowed down. So the steepness is going to get less steep. And my velocity is going to decrease as it goes up the ramp. I should go down to zero. And then for my acceleration, it's not accelerating when it's moving at a constant speed, um, but then it starts to, uh, velocity starts to decrease, so I have my negative acceleration. And if you wanted as a bonus to draw a motion map, we could do that. We are moving at a constant velocity. Okay, I could just represent that here. And then when we start going up the ramp, we start to lose velocity until we reach the very beginning and maybe for an instant it would stop uh, and then as it's going up the ramp the velocity is decreasing in value so we could draw our negative acceleration. Alright this is just to get you started and I hope that this has been helpful.